some s d clutches that i got myself in some gameplay and i'm going to be showing you guys exactly how i play search and destroy what to do what to expect and how to improve in these scenarios so right now we have a very very good start we're in karachi right now and as you can see there's an opponent in front of me but this isn't how the round started what we kind of went through was my teammates would decided to go a right i'm playing solo queue now ideally i would like one of them in middle but that wasn't the case so all i'm thinking right now is i need to get this kill i'm clearly behind him but I expect his enemies to be behind me, right? I know I'm behind enemy lines. I really do expect them to be around me. So I'm gonna show you exactly what we do. We get the first kill. As soon as we get that kill now, if I stand where I'm standing, I'm gonna get traded. Look, look at the lobby. We're in a crimson. If you look at the bottom, crimson, iridescent, these guys are good players. They're not gonna let me play, play my life. So I have to immediately reposition. We re reposition and all I'm doing is I'm expecting the reach out, okay? I'm expecting the reach out and I'm trying to just retreat. If I can get one kill and get away, I've done a great job. But what I end up doing is honestly playing it perfectly. We read it really well. We get the second. As soon as I get that kill now, I immediately back away. Now I'm actually getting chased by the third. I don't think I have enough time to get into the building. So what I'm going to do is go behind the car and this is where you need to be using your smoke grenade. Your smoke grenades are so effective at playing your life and getting you away from kind of the, the danger zone. So you go through and there you go we go across and we're in a really good spot there and now we're in a time where you know like most of the time in that situation you get one if you can somehow get two you've done amazing and get traded if you can get two and play your life you've essentially won the round for your team because we know where the third is my teammates are live we're now 4v2 so i think i played that basically to perfection I'm very happy with that this next scenario it's a little bit over the top i'm not gonna lie but this was um i was i was live on stream if you guys can check me out it's on twitch make sure to drop a uh, nice little follow it's in the description anyways I was showing my stream how to play search and destroy really effectively and like how to actually play smart. So right now, the perfect example, in a 2v1, I don't want to overcommit because I want to ask you guys a question, okay? Even though it's a recorded video, so no one's really answering me, but you guys can let me know down below. In this scenario, in this scenario, what does he expect me to do? What would my opponent want me to do? Right now, this opponent, what would he want me to do? He would simply, if I was him, he would want me to square up and challenge him. Why? Because then I'm giving him a chance to win the round. The worst thing for me to do from his perspective is to snake this and play my life like you see now i get him weak and i back down this must be so annoying because he's waiting for me to overcommit. remember he has to get two kills and defuse a bomb the longer this game goes on the longer the gunfights go on the better it is for me so me taking my time is being very very annoying for him we take our time we back away yes i can't see him yes i've backed away i've given him map pressure he's chucking stuns but i'm buying time now with 15 seconds left i'm just backing away backing away he now has to kill both of us immediately i reposition once again he now has to kill my teammate if he does manage to kill my teammate now i would literally stay here till about eight seconds and then check the bomb i'm just playing flawless search and destroy here i'm playing very nerdy very sweaty search and destroy i don't need to do that you could probably win regardless but i'm trying to teach those good fundamental habits one versus three i'm not gonna lie this one this was clean this was very clean 28 seconds i expect them to be going towards a based on the round the way it was going i thought they were going to a so i went through i was like you know what let me check it out let me go towards a here there's no one on b i just think they're gonna plant the bomb we go through and the first opponent spots me okay rounds over messed up nope great centering we somehow get the kill okay one versus two i'm gonna back away immediately i'm so weak here all i'm doing is expecting the re-challenge now in this scenario you just saw nobody was behind me at b so i'm expecting them to be at a that's why i tried to stun as the stun goes through i'm like oh i've actually hit one of them let me reposition a wrap around and this was pure reflexes i didn't know he was going to be here pure reflexes we get that kill and now i know the second player i just stunned is behind me with 12 seconds left he can't physically plant the bomb so he's probably chasing me so we turn around we wait we hold the angle and there he is he runs right into me and we get the one versus three he probably could have ran away there, but I don't think he had enough time. He might not even have the bomb. So just scenarios like that, you just have to make sure you use your instincts. I obviously they obviously gave me that clutch. You know, you don't get a clutch like that unless they troll. But we could only do what we could in this scenario right now. One versus one, we go through. I know where he is. We chuck the stun. Okay, this is our timing to get the bomb down. As I get the bomb down, I get him weak. Now that he's weak, I know he's not going to push me. I have a trophy there. I'm not worried about him. I'm going to get the bomb down to put the pressure on him because the longer the round goes like this, the more he has the advantage. As soon as that bomb goes down, we flip the script. We've completely flipped the script now. He now has to push me before. 
He didn't need to push me. He needed to delay me, wait it out. He didn't need to do anything. But now the pressure's on him. I'm going to wait. I'm going to wait. He's going to overcommit. We get the kill. Hold your ground. Hold your high ground and be annoying and be effective. There's going to be certain clips of the game audio cuts out. I do apologize for that. The audio for this was a little bit messed up. But hope it, hope I'm still making sense regardless. Off angles to start this one off. Three versus four. We're going to see an off angle. We get the first kill. Look at the mini map. There's one on my right, one on my left. We're going to go through. We're going to try to take out the one on the right first because we're closer. As soon as we get that kill, I know the other players on my left. Immediately we jump down and we get the third. If that was just a really, really good aggressive round in the, in the scenario, we play that almost perfect to perfection. Two versus one. Once again, what do we do here? We get the information. Once we get the information... What does he want me to do here? He wants me to challenge him. He wants me to play aggressive. He wants me to go through and he wants to get that trade. So I'm not going to do that. I'm going to back away. Yes, he's weak. Yes, I can probably get the kill, but I would rather guarantee the round win. We back away. 20 seconds left here. I'm going to play a different angle. I'm gonna, there you go. I see him again. I'm going to back away. And this for me is perfect search and destroy. You don't overcommit. You don't give them any freebies. You suffocate them. You bring them together with your teammates and you're able to get the kill. Right now, I spot the player on my right. I'm like, okay, how can I play this i'm not going to get too aggressive i'm going to play some high ground play some off angles wait i see him we get the kill immediately we back away and reposition it's all about those picks you want to get those kills be impactful get those picks and then back away me and my teammate are going through here we go across as my teammate goes through the right i'm going to go for a different angle and we bait and switch baiting and switching is one of the most crucial parts of search and destroy and you need to utilize it if you're trying to improve right now we're going through we're going to be pinching one i spot one we take him out immediately we reposition we get the second with a great melee now it's a two versus one we're going to push through i'm waiting for my teammate we're going to take our time we're going to pinch it together i don't see him so we're going to go through he gets aggressive and we're able to get the trade two versus two let's see what happens in this next invasion clip we're going to go across right now i spot him what do we do just like earlier let's use a smoke grenade let's cause a distraction let's buy some time for my teammate we use a smoke I'm like, okay, I'm going to back away now. There's no point going through the same angle. We're going to go through a different angle. My teammate does a phenomenal job. He gets the first kill. We now know we're looking for one. We're going to go through, and I'm just trying to find him. We're going to get aggressive. We're going to get aggressive. My teammate shoots him. We know he's on the left now. So all I'm going to do is watch over my teammate. I want my teammate to plant the bomb, sorry, to defuse the bomb. In this moment, I didn't think I realized he was on the right. But as soon as my teammate goes on the bomb now, I watch over him. I get the trade, immediately hop on the bomb there. That was a bit of a weird round, but we made it work. Three versus three. In this scenario, we're going for a retake. Let's see what happens. We jump across. We get the first kill. Great aggressive play. Three versus two. We're taking our time here. We're going to push through. And this is all about the trade. Search and destroy is all about the trade. Okay. One versus two. How do we clutch this? What do we do in this scenario? So there's a few things going through my mind. First thing is we don't have a lot of time to work with. So if I don't make a play, we're going to lose a round regardless. So I might as well go for something. So immediately we're going to go through and we're waiting for someone to scam. The word scam means that, you know, they're just going to overcommit and do something stupid. We go across, we spot one, and this is our potential target to get the kill. I know if he's going to check the bomb, he's going to go to the head glitch. Why? We've made a whole video on this. People like to gravitate towards the head glitches. So I'm going to pre-aim it. We pre-aim it. We get the kill in three, two, one. There you go. Now, with 25 seconds left, his teammate is going to be tweaking. His teammate's going to be worried. So immediately we check the left because we know that was his last known location. We're going to check it. We're going to hold the angle and he overcommits. Now, I can only win that if they overcommit. And that's exactly what happens. But you have to be ready for that. You have to be ready for the potential overcommitment. Three versus four. We're going to go through. We're going to go through our side. In this scenario, they have the bomb down. And I'm fairly sure they have at least three people on the bomb side. So what I'm trying to do right now is think, okay, how can I be in a position where I get one kill and we slowly start to suffocate them? We slowly start to pinch them as a team. And it all starts with this first blood. So we hold the angle. We get the first kill. Okay, great. We get the first kill. Now I'm simply just taking my time. I'm trying to find the second. We're shouldering it we're shouldering it and he sees me okay it gets a bit scary now we're gonna go for a different angle and i'm really just trying to find something my teammate gets another kill and now the pressure's on them we go through and we get the third so i was able to get two kills my teammates are now able to pinch them and now you can see i'm gonna go through middle i'm gonna hold middle and we get a three versus three retake and we play it flawlessly one versus one this is the last clip of the day eight seconds left we go through and we see him on the bomb right now he could be planting he's not shooting back so he could be planting there's a chance he isn't, so I don't want to overcommit and just run at him in case he isn't. So what I'm going to do is play it safe. I'm going to chuck a grenade at him. Now, as that grenade lands, it should make him one shot at minimum. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to get aggressive, and you're seeing the grenade lands. He is now one shot. So whether he plants or not is irrelevant. 
because if that bomb gets planted now, I want to kill him while he's weak. So we're going to go through, we're going to get that trade, and that's exactly what happens. He does plant the bomb, but because of how weak he was, I'm right next to him and we're able to finish the kill. In that scenario, a lot of people would play their life, but the problem is, if you play your life here, let's just say I backed away, and he plants the bomb, he then has the advantage because the flip, the script has flipped. So I like to do this, I like to get aggressive. We've hit him once, by the way, so we know he's already weak. The, the grenade's gonna make him one shot. Now, even if he snakes and peeks me, by the time he shoots me once or twice, I can react, get one shot off and get the kill. So we go through and we get the final kill. YouTube, that is gonna be how to improve a search and destroy easy search and destroy kind of tips and tricks hope you guys enjoyed this one if you did drop a like subscribe to the channel and i will catch you guys for another video tomorrow peace